Hi everyone, this is Yashpal here and this is the 7th out 20 SS that is the proverbial and idiomatic SS I have already covered the 6 idiomatic and proverbial SS you can check out in the playlist so this is the 7th one as I have, prom as I have promised that I will cover almost 21 proverbial and idiomatic essays in one slot that is one session and in another session I will cover 101 philosophical essays from the book a book by the Brianna Beast that is 101 essays that is the way the way to the way to change the thinking the way we think about so let's begin with best for an individual is not necessarily best for the society there is a famous story of an african tribe an anthropologist proposed a game to the kids in an african tribe he put a basketball full of fruits near a tree and told the kids that whoever got their first will win the sweet fruits when he told them to run they all took each other's hand and ran together then sat together enjoying their treats when he asked them why they had run like that when one of them could have had all the fruits for himself then they said Then they said, Ubuntu, how Ubuntu that says, I am a person through other people. It means, Ubuntu, how Ubuntu that says, I am a person through other people. My humanity is tied to yours. Individuals, individualism emanates from the moral and social philosophy, social philosophy that is known to determine the moral worth of an individual. On the other hand, society is an institution that is rooted in the philosophy of collectivism. Collectivism is based on the doctrine of common good. Common good refers to those factors which are shared and are beneficial to all although society is a collection of individuals it doesn't it does not necessarily mean to reflect each and every goal and aspirations of its members a person might be motivated by the personal rewards and benefits whereas society functions on the basis of common goals shared by all even if it mean it means curtailing individual goals the essence of society is that together as social beings it winds the difference it winds the different stakeholders into one whole no individual can lead his or her life in an isolation since humans are social beings society also ensures to keep individual interests in check that might harm the overall interests of others when a person thinks he she is entitled to something that is when he or she starts to work all over others so to satisfy his or her personal goal almost every sinful action ever committed can be traced committed can be traced back to selfish motive of an individual who thought it to be the best for him. Ravana's desire to marry Sita devastated Lanka. 
Similarly, the lust of the Duryodhana for the throne left his kingdom and his people in perils. Means in total devastation, in total havoc. In modern times, the desire of Hitler to achieve the Lebanist Lebanese Sarum by annexing other annexing other countries ultimately lead to Holocaust, the most heinous crimes in the history of mankind. The individual aspirations of a few people to dominate or uh, dominate the society led to the creation of the Banna system, caste system. Caste waste discrimination involves massive violation of civil, political and economic and social and also the cultural rights of major sections of society. Caste system still wears a profound impact on our society. Similarly, creation of class can be traced back to the dominance of affluent people. This has resulted into exploitation of proletariat, mean the working class in the hands of the bourgeois mean the bourgeois mean bourgeois class are the capitalists when an individual interest wants to dominate the society then it suppresses the collective consciousness as well the result in exploitation of the large section of the society in hands of you the quest of european countries to colonize the Asian and African countries ultimately led to the acu acculturation acculturation of the native society and oppression of its people. Also, rise of dictators is attributed to the urge to satisfy their individual goals. They not only set the wrong priorities for the people, but also waged unnecessarily wars as witnessed in the past. For example, Mussolini, Hitler, Saddam Hussein, among many others. Human rights are crushed and people are deprived of even the basic rights. Many times states to appease their political masters get engaged in state-sponsored violence against a race, a religion, or a section of society. Humanitarian crisis in Syria, Myanmar, Venezuela are some of the examples of this. The mindless quest to acquire most of the resources by the corporates company, corporate companies has too left the environment vulnerable. This has posed eminent Danger, danger to the native, our uh, natives of the areas where resources are present. The excessive exploitation of natural resources has disturbed the equilibrium, that is the balance where man was living in harmony with nature. Natural calamities can be attributed to the constant exploitation of the natural resources. Furthermore, furthermore, the violation of environmental protection laws to satisfy the needs of few people has rendered majority of the section of the society vulnerable. Creation of urban heat is dense, smog like situations and forest fire among many others can be attributed to this. Individual conscience has suppressed the collective consciousness. On one hand, anti-India rhetoric is being promoted in the name of freedom of expression and liberal stance. On the other hand, jingoism has become mean the blind nationalism has become a new normal and is being promoted as patriotism. The selective outrage to suit the philosophy of few political masters has posed an imminent danger to the secular and democratic fabric of our society. As a result of this, vulnerable groups such as Dalits, minorities and other weaker sections of societies are being targeted. Communal violence, communal biasness, 
of lawmakers for their own lust for political power and Bodwank has created an unprecedented fissure among the people. The selfishness of few people has also created an economic divide. The economic disparity is continuously increasing. Rich people are becoming richer by the poor, poor are getting poorer. Black money is being hoarded, bordered by the rich people which could have otherwise been used for deploy development purpose. A large number of people are forced to live in slums. A survey by Oxfam International suggests that India's 1% population holds 73% of its total national wealth. This individual quest to earn more and more money has not only resulted in rising income, income inequality but also <clears throat> lead to the exploitation of poor people. In this light, it is worth mentioning here that not all individual interests are detrimental for society. Sometimes what is best for an individual is also best for society. Chanakya's self-interest in overcoming the Nanda dynasty ultimately emancipated the people while unifying India. The role of social reformers in eradicating social evils like Sati, Pratha, child marriage, etc. pushed India into a new era of reason and progress. The stubbornness shown by Mahatma Gandhi to get his demand fulfilled eventually facilitated the achievement of India's independence. Similarly, Sardar Patel's interest to unify India to unify India through strict policies ultimately benefited the nation. So the role of an in, role of an individual interest can also be good for the society unless it is not devoid of empathy, compassion and altruistic character. An individual's self-interest is only best for the society when it has moral underpinning to it. There is a moral base at the ground level. The best for the society can be achieved when the personal aspirations are harmonized with the common good. Individual interests must be, must not undermine social values. To achieve best for society, the individual interests must wear the moral attributes of benef beneficence, respect for authority, justice for the least harm. Like Jeffrey D. Sachs has said, we need to defend the interests of those who have never met and never will. With this, I am signing off for today and very soon I will be presenting you with another essay that is the eighth of 20 essays. So till then keep listening, keep growing, keep enjoying. Thank you. Have a nice life and nice journey.